I'll go ahead and start it just so that we can try and end on time. Um, so we're starting here at 7.01 on November 20th. And who's taking the minutes tonight? You, you know everyone, right? It's always Your Tracy. Kid. It's always Tracy now, right? Okay, sorry. This is like throwback to when we used to have rotating yeah. minute takers. Um, excellent. Okay. So, approval of the previous month's minutes. Did anybody catch anything that needs fixing? Oh, hi, Rihanna. We just started. Glad to see you. Can you hear us okay? All right. Cool. Um, did anybody have any problems with the previous month's minutes? No? Okay. Does anyone want to move to approve the minutes as written? Okay. Anyone want a second? I'll second. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. The October 16th minutes have been approved. All right. Do we have any members of the public that I don't see? We do not. Okay. Well, moving on. Monthly icebreaker. Jimmy. Okay. So today you get kind of an easy one and you get a choice. So for those of you who, hi Susie, hi. just in time for our icebreaker. Oh, okay. Hi Susie. Hi. And it's a bit of a choose your own adventure. Okay. So. Uh, <laughs> soup. Oh dear. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Distractions. Yes. <laughs> if, if you are somebody who celebrates Thanksgiving, what is the one food you most look forward to every year? And maybe you celebrate, maybe you don't, maybe you don't like food, <laughs> or Thanksgiving, traditional Thanksgiving foods. Um, if you don't want to answer that question, you can tell me what your favorite condiment is that you would take with you to a deserted island. Oh, oh man. I like that it's a condiment and not a food. Actually. I know. Yeah, I know. That's Specifically a condiment. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Does anybody want to go first? Uh, I don't mind. Whoa. So, for, for, can we answer both? If you want. It is. Yeah. I mean, I have an answer for both. So, selfishly for food, it's bread because I bake bread. So, I mean, I know what I'm getting. And that's what I look forward to. And I look forward to people enjoying it. If they do, I hope so. Um, no. Although I'm not making it this year. <laughs> Condiment on a deserted island would be um, jalapeno stuffed cocktail islands. Oh. Okay. That's very specific. Isn't it though? I mean, I don't know if that's yeah. Not sure there. Yeah. I never had Just cocktail in this. Thank you. Okay, so if that's a condiment, John, what do you eat those with? Gin. Yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> I was going to say, that's the case. Like, okay, now we have to cross it out of here. Yeah. Condiment territory in my mind into beverage territory. Yes. <laughs> it's in garnish. Yes. Are they the same? Garnish. Garnish. It's a condiment. It's in like a condiment it aisle in this grocery store. Okay. Mm -hmm. Expansive definition. I like it. That's good. That's so awesome. now that this is a recorded meeting, I kind of wish I would have chosen something. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. That's yes, scandal. That's right. That's scandal. Scandal. <laughs> scandal. Splashed across the yeah. Water. That's right. <laughs> Men eats onions. Um, anyone want to go next? It's a hard act to follow. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about that. <laughs> I'm going to go with stuffing. But that means what kind of different things? What, like just, I don't know, like cornbread stuffing. Okay, yeah. cornbread stuffing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you put it, it in the bird? Or, or whatever. whatever. <laughs> What's that? Do you put it in the bird or is that too risky? No, actually I do put it in the bird, but I, I have, um, I put it with, um, oh gosh, what is that, the cheesecloth? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I put it in there. And then, yeah, and then I just like kind of heat it up, you know, kind of puff it up in the, um, just like on a skillet. Mm -hmm. Give it a little more. Okay. So it's not so watery. Right. Yeah. It's a good tip. Pro tip. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's nice. <laughs> yeah. 
I just follow the directions on the box, so it's <laughs> nothing, nothing fancy. Sounds good. Do we have to, is it either or, or was it just? It's supposed to be either or. Either I just or. You help John did. Oh, okay, okay. So no, that's the All right, anybody else? Yeah. I made a lot of food. Yes. I've already started. Oh. But yes. I think my favorite is apple pie. Oh, yeah. Classic. Like a classic. And this year, um, I bought the apples like a month ago and I've been saving them in cold storage because I wanted to make sure that I got the varieties I wanted from the local orchard. And she wasn't sure she was gonna still have any by last weekend, so. Wow, wow. so which it's kind of so good? This year, um, well, I go to Yayan a lot. And although we were from Pennsylvania, my dad always brings apples back um, my dad still helps manage a farm in Pennsylvania and he brings apples back and forth, but they're not my favorite pie apples. Um, and so this year, yeah, yeah, there's the Brayburns and the John and Golds, and I'm going to do a mix. Ooh, that sounds good. Oh, do, you, do you make the crust too? Yeah, and I'm gluten free, so it's been a real learning curve over the years, but now the gluten free crust is better than the regular anyway. So I ah. finally found a recipe that it's from American Tips. Uh, Meredith Press Kitchen gluten free cookbook. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a good tip. I'll have to do that. Yeah, I love that one. Anybody else? So, part of my family celebrates Thanksgiving and part of it doesn't. So, the years I do do the Thanksgiving thing, um, cranberry sauce is what I use the most. So. From the jar? Um, I'm not really sure how they make it. <laughs> so, I just Which I think that does yeah. qualify as an acceptable condiment. Yeah. <laughs> right. the, the true it's American cool. way is to squeeze it out of a can. And yeah, yeah. So so it has that yeah. Okay. Then it's probably. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You have to see the ridges. It's really yes. Dirty. Oh, yeah. Right. Awesome. <laughs> my dad brings a jar to my house because I don't make it. He brings his own jar and he just has it on a side plate. <laughs> Right. Yeah, I always just do the travels. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yum. Okay, Jamie, you want to go or you want yeah. to go? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so I like a lot of the Thanksgiving sides. I don't eat turkey, but, um, you know, most of the sides I eat throughout the year. But what I look forward to when Thanksgiving comes around is um, mashed potatoes, most of all, with, um, it's got to be like processed gravy. Can't be like the real thing. <laughs> no cranberries are harmed in my cranberry <laughs> sauce. Yes, <Yeah. laughs> it's the canned stuff. I don't know how real that is. I think the sound coming out is unbeatable. Oh yeah. <laughs> and then like kind of like what John was saying. <laughs> just, had had to go there. just had to go there. <laughs> that comes like about an hour yeah. after the meal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Nice. So there's a book called Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat about yes. like a chef's take on like her and she has a whole section on Thanksgiving and yes. turkey and cranberry sauce and all the elements. So. And I love so that out all the way. Yeah. Because I know what I'm going to get. Oh, yeah. I have a family story about it. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen that mini series for that book? No, I haven't. Yeah, I just kind of listened to the audiobook and yeah. Yeah, uh, it's it's a four part mini series and she's so sweet and lovely, like just as a person. She's and then the food of course is amazing and all the different countries she visits. And I highly recommend it. I think it's on Netflix. If I remember right. Well, that's fun. Um, I love. I don't actually really like Thanksgiving food. I like making it. I like having Thanksgiving, but. This is really gross if you're a vegetarian, I'm sorry, but the only part I really like is the turkey skin. And um, only if it's real crispy. Oh. So, oh, I know, I'm sorry. I have, I, for years I was a vegetarian, two of my kids are vegetarian, so I totally get it that it's gross, but I'm being honest, it's, it's the skin that I like. I don't care for stuffing or mashed potatoes or gravy. Um, my husband absolutely loves all those things and makes it all, which is good. I make green bean salad, but the Martha Stewart version, because my grandma made the canned green bean canned soup version, and so it's nostalgic for me. So I like making that, and then I make a pumpkin pie from scratch. 
which I, I like to like actually cook the pumpkin and you know do all that. Nice. So I think I enjoy the process more than the product. <laughs> and I don't know about a condiment. I'm not a big condiment person, but I am a big bread person. When you said that, John, baguettes. The only true French baguettes in America, as far as I'm concerned, are from Babette's Bakery. If you haven't been, mm -hmm. it's just down the street here. Unreal. I would take those any day over any condiment. Really good over any food. The, that is um, my top one. The, the cheese and porter place, they, they bring them in from Canada somewhere. Yeah. And you can get them baked or par-baked. And okay. they, they have, you know, French flour. That's why they bring yeah. it in all the way from that far. And, Ooh. you know, well, they're good. I mean, I don't know. As much as I have been a bread baker to do it, I'm like, yeah, it's... I don't know if you've been that far. Yeah, have you been to Babette's? No. Oh my gosh. Seriously, the best pastries, like, this side of France. <laughs> Unreal. I know. I'd totally check it out, yeah. yeah. Yeah, there. You know the Prospect neighborhood? Mm -hmm. That's where it is. You know, there. Yeah, it's in there. It's tucked in there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Good tip. This has been very productive, Tracy. Yes. Yes. Very productive. <laughs> yes. It's really good with all their Tracy's time. last. Yes. I mean, how can you beat everything? Well, I know. I guess that's traditional, but I've always loved pumpkin pie, so that's like what I look forward to. Sometimes I'm even late for Thanksgiving and just make it throughout the year. There you go. Um, and it's one of the things that's been easiest for us to like adapt for our diet because I, I no longer can have eggs. Um, so it's easier to, to figure out some other recipes. So that's that's one of the things I always look forward to. And then um, I I don't know if anyone else has heard of this, but there's a basically like salsa sort of, but it's called pickle de gallo. And it's made with like chunks of like cucumber and kind of like grind like red peppers. But it's it's basically like pico, pico de gallo, but with pickles. Oh, <laughs> so oh. I would use that on really good. I love pickles, that and good. it's really that good. They good. have some spicy versions, really which good. I didn't try, uh -huh. <laughs> but uh, but the mild version is very good if you like pickles and that kind of flavor. So where would one find this? It's a a few different grocery stores. I normally buy it at Natural Grocers, mm -hmm. so, okay. and just in the deli, like, mm -hmm. the other pickles and stuff. But yeah, it's very it's good. From yeah, it's not sweet. It doesn't. It's just basically like pickles, like cut up small chunks of pickles. But it has more of like the texture and stuff of like pico de gallo. It, yeah. It's kind of like that. Um, it's not as like saucy. It's definitely more like you know like cleaner. Yeah, like chopped vegetables more than it sounds like good. a relish, but it's really good. Yeah, it's my favorite. Yeah, sounds really good. Yeah, so many good tips here. It's going to be extremely beneficial. It's a good thing to meet after the dinner hour. <laughs> Otherwise, we'd all be starting. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you. That was fun, Jamie. That was a good one. Um, are we good to move on? Anybody have any final thoughts on that? Okay, I can't really always tell. I mean, we can like go on forever. Oh, <laughs> I realize true. I'm not on camera. Anyway, I was nodding. I think we're fine. <laughs> okay. All right, so next item of new business is the post-election debrief thing. Um, Cynthia and I had a quick debrief when she and I spoke prior to the meeting. Um, so I can share a few thoughts, but of course, I'm very curious to hear what you all think. And um, Cindy, or excuse me, um, Susie, your perspective, of course, from the council and just personally, I'm curious about. So. Does anybody want to kick it off, or do you want to hear what Cynthia and I had talked about first? Uh, I don't mind just kicking that off a little bit, just and then pass it along. You know, I, uh, I, I mean, I think it's obvious. I we're, we're disappointed. Mm -hmm. um, I, I can honestly say that. I mean, I was, I was um, probably more surprised by how much. The library ballot, really any of them, by how much they didn't pass. <laughs> um, but but I cannot honestly say that by the time the results were coming in, I was completely in shock that it didn't pass. I just felt there were a lot of uphill battles to get this or any of them passed, even though you remain hopeful. Uh, I just feel like there were a lot of things up against it. I mean, the, the timing of it, you know, it, it wasn't referred to the ballot until the last minute 
equally allowed, which left no time to really form any sense of a campaign. Um, I, you know, it was just going to be hard as much as I wanted it to. So it's it's where we're at, and you know, we have to kind of just take a gulp and move forward and see what we can do next. So I I also. You know, this is a board meeting. I, I, I can't help but at least publicly acknowledge the friends of the library mm -hmm. and the board, but the friends actually financially contributed to a campaign and tried to help with, with some of that, with some digital campaigning and signage and uh, you know other aspects to, tr to try and make, and some letters to the editor um, that some here wrote and some other friends wrote. So I, I, I do want to express my appreciation for that publicly because that means a lot, you know, and, you know, we didn't get the result we wanted, it means a whole lot that that advocacy and support is there. Thanks. Any other reactions? I echo John's disappointment. I also echo the gratitude for the friends and other community members who did um, speak out, who talked to people, um, it was uh, absolutely a group effort, even if it wasn't an enormous one by campaign standards. Um, I wasn't shocked, uh, I was disappointed. Um, the, the most surprising thing to me was actually the numbers. You know, this is the first local election that I've been this closely following. Um, and to see the turnout, in terms of numbers um, was was pretty surprising so by my rough calculations you know we had about 650 ish people who voted yes for the library you know which relative to the population of Longmont isn't that much but you know it's a lot, a lot more residents than I know personally so I'm grateful for those 600 and um, it also seemed like the all three initiatives came in about same. the same you know within a point or two percentage point or two of one another um, so that was also information for me in that there wasn't a clear preference by the voters for one versus the other which would uh, I think help you to really make that interpretation that this was just a bad year for asking anyone to spend more on the campaign. That for me is, is my takeaway. That I felt like, um, you know, John talked about the timing of the late timing of getting it on the ballot. And I think just the timing of kind of where we are, where we're kind of in a period of contraction right now and, and fiscal conservatism as, as folks are still coming out of the pandemic. And it just felt like um, this is not, it just feels like lean years. And so, and it was again, interesting to see by how much all new taxes were struck down. Like any new tax basically was like not interesting to people right now. And, mm -hmm. and so I really think it's a, a real timing thing of kind of where we are um, financially right now. Um, well, I can just add, I think Cynthia and I talked about many of the things you did. Um, I think we felt, or we talked about at least, a little bit of just confusion or frustration that maybe, Susie, you could shed some light on too, of just kind of like, why did anybody think it was a good idea to run three tax questions at the same time? Like, how was that ever going to work out in anybody's favor in a purple slash semi-libertarian type state um, and city so I guess just in terms of like how that all ended up being that way Cindy and I were feeling a little sense of frustration or just confusion around why that was the choice that was made when it seems like there might have been other ways for that to happen um, and I think my big concern is just like, I'm worried this is gonna send the message 
to the city council that they don't need to fully fund the library because the voters didn't choose to show a lot of support for that. And kind of to Jamie's point, I don't necessarily think that's a good interpretation of these results because I really think it was more of an anti-tax kind of baby as well. It was an anti-tax reaction as far as I can tell. And this was a regressive tax, so as much as I promoted it and wanted it to pass because that's our only hope, I still don't think it was a good tax. I don't think we should fund a public service with a regressive tax like that. So personally, um, so anyway, I just have questions about that and I worry about the repercussions or the messaging that maybe the interpretation that one could draw from it that people don't really want the library to be fully funded. And I don't think that's something that I'm comfortable with people taking away from this. Chime, chime in now. Did everybody on the board get to? I don't. I don't know if everyone had a chance to to talk about it. One of the things. So we are going to have a council debrief. So we're going to discuss this as as a council. Um, one of the things that I noticed, because I was running for re-election, was that in each one of our races we had candidates who were um, aggressively against, like they were very vocal and against, and you know, one of them even used it as the reason to run is because, so there was, I think, I was very angry in the sense that we have people coming in and using this for political gain. Um, and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say it. I don't care. <laughs> Um, because, you know, I was really angry because in the sense it hurt us all. Um, when I've sp spoken, I, I had a chance to chat with people at um, the NGLA, the Neighborhood Groups Leadership Association. And, you know, one of the things that I, and I said, and, and it was funny because a couple of people were like, they acted like they hadn't heard this before. And I was like, I've been saying it every month, every month. And it gets to the point where I wonder if people were just hearing what they want to hear. Um, but we have staff who are working above and beyond to give us the services that our community um, is accustomed to and, you know, and, and meeting the needs of the community. And so then it became, well, you know, well, we, we have everything. I was like, well, if we, you know, pull that, you know, just pull people so tight, we're going to lose good people. So that was, that was very frustrating to, to hear that, you know, as, as we were looking at, at some of, you know, we have the capital part, but then we also have the sales tax portion to cover ongoing. And, and then, you know, just having that conversation with, you know, and I've had conversations with people afterwards and, I think it was, what was, it, what was this, $67? Is that correct for the library one? It was one five for the property tax, and then it was like 15 cents on a $100. So there was, okay, yeah. So it was like a lot, and then I think there was the rec center that was 100 for per 500,000. Um, you know, so we're, we're talking about, you know, what were the impacts to the individual person People were, well, you know, it's not that bad. I'm like, <coughs> why did you vote for it? <laughs> and I think people got caught up in a lot of the anti-messaging. And so that was something that made me very frustrating, seeing that yes. from a candidate, because as I'm going to the doors and, and talking with, with residents, I didn't really notice that in the 2019. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, I, maybe I wasn't paying attention. I, I didn't see it as as prominent as I did in this election. That's interesting. So, um, and the fact that it came at the same time as HH. So that was that was the other thing. And I think, well, um, I would really recommend in the future that if we pass a local measure that it is not at the same time that we have the municipal, you know, city council 
running. Um, because I noticed that there were people who wanted to see this fail so they could come up with a better solution if they liked it. So that, and that was some of the, I mean, it was, it was very petty and it, was, it, it hurt our community. That, that was my take. Um, so I haven't had a chance to really chat with other council members yet. We're gonna have a, I, I, we'll get it on the agenda um, and I'll find out the next time we meet when that will be. Um, what, so that one, I think, you know, aligning with HH, I think that that, I wanted to see if the percentage of, you know, how much HH failed you know, it would have been, I, I would have liked to see what the numbers, did people just go straight down the ballot? No, 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 yeah. on everything. A lot of people were saying, like, on next door. Yeah. yeah. just went, no. no, all the way down. Yeah. 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 And, um, you know, we had the, so I remember in the early stages when we were talking about having the an equity or, you know, it was, I think it was a, a culture and equity tax. Mm -hmm. I, I can't remember what we called it then, but it was something that was going to be all together as one. And then as we were talking with, you know, the Parks and Rec Board and, you know, other, I think, you know, looking at wanting it to be separate, you know, to have it, having it not all clumped together because they were afraid that it would, would um, it would be a sticker shock. Not just that, but and then you would have people who were in favor of one, but maybe not. Yes, and yes. Couldn't pick and choose. Pick and choose. So the the benefit to having it this way would have been had people just picked and choose which ones were their priority. Mm -hmm. But it really looked like everybody just went no all the way down. Um, and yeah, so that was. I, I would really recommend that we do not do a local measure at the same time we have city council races. Um, so that can't be used. Um, based on what I saw this past election, I, I would think that's good. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had other thoughts, I can't remember. <laughs> there, was a, there was a lot of things um, going. You know, and, and the thing is, is we we're writing these measures based on what our constraints with Tabor are. I mean, and it's, and you look at any kind of measure that we have to, to put on the ballot, there, it is confusing. Um, you know, I don't know how, how we can make it any easier. The piece with having the property tax along with the sales tax was so that the burden wouldn't be just on one, um, you know, on one party. So, you know, we tried, but um, it, it'll be interesting to hear, you know, input from from everybody else on council as well. Thank you. Does anyone want to follow up on anything that's been said so far? Just that I was sad to how much ugliness mm -hmm. I saw online. I'm not super naive but you know again with the being new to local elections and you know we're, we're talking about things here that really shouldn't be these uh, supercharged emotional provocative things right you're either for them or you're against mm -hmm. them but you know I'm not going to uh, mm -hmm. completely insult and, and diminish your yes. humanity because you're in favor of like yes. a local tax measure, right? Mm -hmm. And the types of things that I was seeing online, it's like, I was telling myself, like, you silly, like, of course you know how people are mm -hmm. uh, in these spaces. And, you know, it was just kind of a little, I don't know, uh, deflating mm -hmm. that uh, there, were, there were both residents candidates mm -hmm. who were taking the opportunity to get in there mm -hmm. and say, you know, well, if you vote for this, you are one of these types of people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, one of the other contributors is the type of 
national political pony. Yep. That word. Yep. And so there were a lot of folks who were already riled up and ready to uh, make judgments mm -hmm. against people's entire big being because of what they supported. It. Yeah. And I don't think it's going to impact or um, how council views the, the library. I think, like for me, I, I, I really want to look at the budget as a whole. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and what, what, are, what are these things that we're prioritizing? Let's, let's look in and kind of reevaluate things. I don't know if anybody, I mean, that's just me. I don't know if anybody else on council does just look at me like you're crazy. <laughs> but I really, I want to take a deeper look and, mm -hmm. and see what we can do, you know, from from the inside. But it, it was it was very sad to see all that vitriol. And like, these are just, so now we're waiting for, you know, these uh, free market people. So. Start writing your checks, free market people. <laughs> Start funding our library. Now, once so they're really glad to hear that you think that council will be able to sit down and look at priorities and figure out um, how to support the library in, you know, in other ways. Because the other thing, other than obviously the volatile, nature of some people's opinion. I do think that there was an, a lot of people in the middle who didn't vote for it because they look at the library as the Longmont Library is great. What, why do you need more money? And so, and I think it's like when you watch the Olympics and you're like, oh, that looks easy. I can do that. And so I think in some ways too, we have to remember that I think for a lot of people who do fall in the middle, they voted no on this because the Longmont Library is doing a great job. And so then we need to continue to, to su support in as many ways as possible because in some ways this is also people not understanding what more there could be and seeing what is available as great and look, we have this wonderful service and not, again, not seeing staff burnout, mm -hmm. not seeing that there's services that our library doesn't have that other libraries do, but seeing what is available and what is here and seeing the passionate and lovely people. And so, yes, just to kind of keep in mind too, that there are those who just, it's like the Olympics, they're experts doing expert things and it makes, you all make it look easy. And there were a lot of messages that went out. I know we didn't spend tens of thousands of dollars mm -hmm. uh, on campaigns, but you know there was messaging from various citizens that that poked that specifically, mm -hmm. poked at that issue, mm -hmm. um, and the fact that you know the staff does such a tremendous job that the the holes don't always show, mm -hmm. and. Um, yeah, you know, it is, it is reassuring. One thing I'll, I'll say that's reassuring to me is that council, as opposed to the general public, I do believe council understands the need. Mm -hmm. I don't think the general public as a whole really un understands or sees the need or values the need. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was writing right up to the last minute. I was still talking to people who thought that the money was purely for a branch and did not include operational costs, although it was printed everywhere. Include was. So now we know who was. Yeah. Well, if you guys are okay with it, um, Cindy and I, Cynthia, after we talked, she drafted a letter that we wanted to bring to you all to see how you felt about sharing with council to kind of reiterate the point of um, our, I feel like hope is too like light of a word, like expectation, demand, I don't know. I wanna say demand because I'm pretty frustrated at this point and I realize that Susie, you and Tim have really done what you have, you've given it your best, you know, to advocate for the library, but it's not happened yet. So um, just to make it very clear in council, Cindy and I were hoping to perhaps share a letter reminding council about 
you know, um, all the things we just talked about and not to let the poor showing at the ballot um, undermine any commitment to fully funding the library. So can you all see my screen at this point? Yeah. Okay. Is it big enough? I could zoom if you maybe a little bit might help, I guess. Yeah, I think we're fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay. At least us here right. room. Yeah. I'll zoom for my old eyes then. <laughs> so I'll just read it out and then um, we can talk about it a little bit and if anybody has strong reservations we can, you know, reconsider the whole idea, but if you're open to the idea, then we could wordsmith it, you know, based on what Cynthia put down here. Um, so it reads, in light of the failure of ballot measure 3C in the November 2023 elections, Longmont Library Board urges the City Council to work towards fulfilling the Longmont Public Library priority budget requests. We consider the need for outreach staff and outreach budget to be of highest important, currently importance. Currently, there's a single staff member serving in the capacity of what should be a department. Enhanced outreach capacity would lead to more residents as cardholders and greater involvement in the library. This is especially important for underserved populations within the city. Of second import is the need for staff development and increased funding for temporary staff, especially for the children's and circulation departments. This funding is especially important as it allows library staff to perform extra duties due to limited staffing. The board also recommends increased funding for professional development opportunities for staff and to meet increased cost of digital collections. The Library Advisory Board recognizes Longmont Public Library as an essential service to the Longmont community and anticipates Council's continued support with appreciation. So Cynthia wrote that, you know, from her perspective, I think having talked with John a little bit about what he's, you know, really considers just absolutely essential at this point. I personally, you know, my feeling is there should also be something in here about funding it to that level that we have all acknowledged it needs to be funded to. <laughs> Um, and that begging them to just fulfill these basic requests is really pathetic at this point. Personally, I feel like we shouldn't have to be just beg to get these basic things filled because we should really be getting our needs met at the level of preferred service. Um, so I don't know, that would be my suggestion to add, but like number one priority is fund this at the level of preferred service. Number two is if you're not gonna do that at the very least, fulfill these other essential requests. I'm obviously fired up about this. I have been for years, so I don't know. Maybe that's not where the board is, but that's where I'm at with it. Where, what about you all? I can't really call in people and have the screen open at the same time, so maybe John can help me with that part. I'm good with having that added in as well. Yeah, I agree. I like that that phrasing of, you know, let's for, not forget about the feasibility study that the city paid for and what came out of it. Mm -hmm. um, that's obviously, um, you know, what the, the expert assessment says we should have. But then I do like then also saying, but at the bare minimum, you need to do the bare minimum. I mean, <laughs> I'm just typing out a little bit of what, while well, I'm listening to you also, if you want to give me other verbiage, I'm just kind of trying to capture what you're saying here. As indicated by the city's own feasibility study, okay, I'm just capturing that thought, anyone else? I completely agree um, with drafting a letter and think it's fully within this board's um, jurisdiction as an advisory body to advise the council. Um, I would also, you know, encourage council to um, to do this. I guess I'm looking for for just like a little tiny bit more language that connects how doing this, how growing the library helps us all or helps council meet some of its strategic goals or um, actualize some of its values. Um, you know, 
rather than we're the library board and we want the library to have all the good things. You know, yeah. it's like maybe just zoom out a tiny bit. Um, you know, more more robust outreach, a fuller or actual department would also um, help the library prepare for a future election. Because the more people who know about the library and the services it provides, um, the more favorable they may look upon the library in years to come. And hearing uh, from others uh, what I heard, which was like, so many people who don't have any idea, no matter how much, many ways you try to tell them. Um, that that seemed like a really strategic focus for this library in the coming years. Okay. So would you put that in kind of a, I just sort of put it up here as a placeholder, like, as part of this, mm -hmm. why you should just... Yeah, I was going to look it up, because I think, I see like Say a louder. sign inside the chambers. Um, is there a sign that lists what the councils? Oh, our goals. Yeah. Yeah. So our and it's it's the pillars. Yes. That's kind of. That's yeah. Right. So we have around the pillars. You know, we have under the umbrella of equity. Um, we have core services, which is the foundation, and then the pillars with housing, early childhood, and transportation. So with, I think, the library, that falls under our core services. That's how I perceive it. And then if we're looking at it through an equity lens, you know, you look at our library, that's one of the great equalizers that really, um, you know, that, that provide balance for people who cannot afford to, um, you know, purchase books or go, um, you know, college or you know you get yeah. higher ed you know so it's it's having that um, I saw so for me I think with the equity and the foundation being the core services the library definitely falls within mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. does this sum that up um, investing appropriately in the library helps the city to meet its strategic pillars including oh, yeah. its equity goals I don't know if it's called, they're called pillars, because uh, the pillars, the portion, that was housing, early childhood, and transportation. So it's really our strategic goals, or... Okay. Including its equity uh, mission, or... Mm -hmm. Yeah, equity mission. Through providing four services available only at the library. Were those all elements part of your strategic plan? Yes. So like a strategic plan goals like that. Is that better? And then I just added as a transition then like at a minimum we call for the council to fulfill the priority budget requests and then it kind of leads into what Cynthia had here does that does anyone want to add anything or make it flow better I feel like I'm I've got a little brain fog still so sorry if I'm not wording it properly so our vision um, involves people and places. So people, Longmont is the world's greatest village where children are most fortunate to be born and raised. Older adults are supported through, uh, through their entire life uh, journey and all people have access to food, shelter, and the opportunity to thrive and feel like they belong. So I, I, I feel like that encompasses the work of, of the library. So there's there's ways to tie that into our council vision. Maybe I should say including its strategic plan goals, including its equity vision or mission. I'm trying to figure out which word. Our, okay, so let me pull up. So including 
including increased equity through providing core services available through the library. And Catherine, I'm gonna um, email you the slide deck that we had of our city council priorities for 2023 and 2024. That might help okay. with um, language. language, yep. Am I allowed to just share this out to you all? I don't know what the... No. That's what I thought. Yeah, I mean, otherwise it constitutes a meeting. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, yeah, either it, it kind of has to either be moved and, and approved now or, or I think brought back at the next meeting. Okay, well I feel like in terms of time sensitiveness... You can work with one other person. We can... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. I'm just refreshing my email if you sent it. Um, no, anybody I'm have anything right else? Maybe just moving on to the next part here from what Cynthia wrote that we want to change. John, does this reflect what you and she discuss appropriately? The, the way it, you know, as far as, and, and it'll lead into the next, well, somewhat. Anyway, yes, it, it, when, we, when we spoke and I, talked about budget priorities, this is in alignment with that. Is there anything you would want to see in there or change as it exists now? No. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody on those body paragraphs? There's a single stoppage in the capacity, which should be a department. Single stoppage capacity with needs of more residents as part holders, greater involvement in the library. Um, I would just say, which is registered populations. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's my tiredness, but the, the sentence in that next graph. Um, it's a little confusing for me. This funding is especially important as it allows library staff to perform extra duties due to limited staffing. I think taken out of context, that is unclear, and you want to be careful about using the word extra. Because so we're we're not we're not asking we're not adding on extra unneeded things, right? It's it's I think the meaning is that it allows existing library staff to uh doesn't it basically allow them to do like overtime is that well it, it sounds like it allows them to really just focus on their one job instead of having to do a bunch of other stuff like the extra stuff is happening now mm -hmm. oh, oh yes. and we need You're, we okay, need yeah. more staff in order to bring that down to a sustainable level. Mm -hmm. About essential duties instead of extra duties, because yeah, I think you're probably right that their they're, they're focus is being spread around other things because they don't have the staffing. This will get them back to their essential duties. But the due to limited staffing, I don't think is coming at, after the right clause. Okay, how about um what if we lead to that like due to limited staffing library members are um how would you just how did you describe it jamie like they're they're taking on additional you don't even need to put it there you could just have that back to that sentence this funding is especially important as it allows overburdened library staff to perform essential or to, to focus on essential duties. Is that how you meant it, John? Like, is that in line with? It is, yeah. But I know what the original sentence meant, but. Yeah, I, I see the confusion, yeah. Okay, how does that, does that read better? This funding is especially important as it allows overburdened library staff to focus on their essential duties. Oh, wait, I couldn't hear that. Um, it was, it was. We're quibbling over words. You still can't hear it, but it's cutting out. Oh. Oh, sorry, we were mumbling, so it wasn't, okay. it wasn't uh, adding any value yet. So, um, <laughs> Do 
to meet the increased cost of digital collection? To, um, I feel like the word the is missing. Yeah. Also, against increased funding for professional development opportunities for staff and meet the increased cost of digital collections. I would say, like, increased support <laughs> in that last line. Or, I don't know. Mm. I don't feel 100% supported when we can't, we're begging for partial funding every single budget cycle. I feel like there's a lot of kind things said about the library and a lot of appreciation shown towards this, but like there's not money where the mouth is. For a better word than substantiated, substantive, <laughs> like like physical, actualized, something we can point to instead of emotional support. Yes, I mean maybe we could say that the Tangible. law library recognizes it as an essential service to the city and appreciates the verbal support. We would also like to see commensurate financial support. <laughs> What about tangible? Mm -hmm. I don't know, the word recognizes seems weird to me, like... Catherine, I still think you need to start it with your sentence about we, we appreciate the Oh, I forget the word you used. Um, the verbal appreciation uh -huh. for the library. Uh -huh. Okay. I don't know about this essential service part because I feel like we said that at the beginning. Let me just strike that for now, but I'll put it down here in case we think of it goes well in there anyway. tangible support and appreciation? You think you maybe swap out one of those appreciation words? Yeah. Right. I think that for the 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 library advisory board recognizes I like it ending with appreciation. I think okay. the Lama Advisory Board recognizes the council's verbal support. Because, like you said, you're getting a little thin of appreciating the verbal support. <laughs> <laughs> you can't appreciate your way to paychecks for people. What about yeah. values? Values instead of recognizing. I think recognizes. I don't really value it that much at this point. All right. 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 Don't flatter them then. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe anticipate and looks forward to the councils. It anticipates what expects. Expects what she said. Demands. <laughs> 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 expects eagerly. Uh, eagerly anticipates. Expects. To see, <laughs> expect to see the question. I don't know. I think that doesn't work. Expect to come to come to school. Expect somehow. Yeah, if we're gonna use it, we have to wordsmith it a little bit. Requests. Not too soft. Uh -huh.
I kind of like it eagerly anticipates. <laughs> it's a little tongue in cheek, but yeah. I do I do eagerly anticipate it. <laughs> More concrete support, more tangible. The capsule spit school support with appreciation. Appropriate, adequate, uh, what? What's the preferred level of support? I like appropriate. I mean, yeah, I think we set it up here, but it's investing appropriately up there. Can't hear you. Tangible, substantial, just keep it fiscal. Can't hear anybody if you're talking. If you're not, that's fine, but just look at it. Okay. Well, should I read it out one more time here? And then we can take a vote. Does anyone want to make any more suggestions before I do that? I will just add the, the last line that you were kind of debating whether it was needed because we keep saying essential. So mm -hmm. I will just say that that's something that, that's a hot thing for me, like a hot button move thing is Libraries are an essential service, and I don't think it can be repeated enough. And okay. the more we, we get that into people's minds, that, that it being essential and not a luxury, I don't think it hurts. Okay. How about, what if we say, first of all, thank you, I agree. And the other people are okay with it. What if we linked that to anticipates the council's fiscal s support in recognition of the essential, uh, in recognition of the essential service the library provides to the community or something like that? Yeah, I like that. Anyone else? Ideas? I'm just putting it out here, but we can change it if we need to. How does that work to people? Why don't you try reading it out loud for Flo? Okay, the whole thing? You guys ready? Okay. Um, in light of the failure of ballot measure 3C in the November 2023 elections, the Longmont Library Board urges the City Council to fund the library at the preferred level of service as indicated by the City's own feasibility study. Disappointing results should not deter the council from fulfilling this goal. Investing appropriately in the library helps the city to meet its strategic plan goals, including increased equity through providing core services available through the library. At a minimum, we call the council to call on the council to fulfill the Longmont Public Library priority budget requests. We consider the need for outreach staff and an outreach budget to be of highest importance. Currently, there's a single staff member serving in the capacity of what should be a department. Enhanced outreach capacity would lead to more residents as cardholders and greater involvement in the library, which is important for underserved populations within the city. Of second import is the need to, for staff development and increased funding for temporary staff, especially for the children's and circulation departments. This funding is especially important as it allows overburdened library staff to focus on their essential duties. Board also recommends increased funding for professional development opportunities for staff and to meet the increased cost of digital collections. 
The Library Advisory Board recognizes the Council's verbal support for the library and eagerly anticipates the Council's fiscal support in recognition of the Longmont Library's role as an essential service to the community. Thoughts? Pretty solid. I would suggest adding the word election before the word results at the top just to clarify that it is not the feasibility study results. When you say the disappointing results, the Thank disappointing you. election Ah, uh, yes. Good catch. Good catch. Yep. Um, in the paragraph below that, mm -hmm. um, the last clause, I would change the word important to essential, just going back to my previous theme. Yep. Mm -hmm. Good. I'm just highlighting any changes so that Cynthia will be able to see them. Like major changes. Okay. Anything else? I think we say especially twice here. Maybe critically important? Is that too dramatic? Central is critical. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if we say essential here, that's good. Something about this last line just, I think it's a parallelism issue. So put um, both um, between funding and four. The board also recommends increased funding both for professional development opportunities and to meet the there we go increase. yep and thank you both and i don't know if you need for staff where it just makes it word there because if it's a professional yeah. development opportunity it is for staff yeah and to meet yeah i think that's tighter yep good Anything else? Oh, I wondered about saying goal and goal here. How about responsibility? Yeah. <laughs> What's okay. happening, John? You let me lead one meeting. <laughs> I just I love that. <laughs> it had to be this one. <laughs> I'm way too responsible for this. The disappointing election results should not deter the council from fulfilling this responsibility. It is a responsibility. This is an essential public service. Fund it like you believe it. Okay. That's my soapstone. So, soapbox, there we go. Anyone else have a soapbox issue? Catherine, after that oh, second, it should be importance, correct? I don't know what she was going with there. I agree that we could have a different lead in, maybe. Uh, of. Or you could just say secondly. Secondly. How about just second, comma? But then we still, the sentence still doesn't work. Second is the need. It is the need. It's very passive mm -hmm. construction, so we need a. A secondary need? In addition, how about the next priority is sure. Yeah. Can't hear you. We're hearing a voice yeah. that doesn't exist here. It's a ghost. Oh, yes. A ghost. Yeah, either, voice. either somebody at home has somebody talking that we're hearing, or huh. I don't know. <laughs> Everybody's on mute. It's curious. Yeah, I don't know. It can only be paranormal activity. Yes. yes. Are they saying anything interesting? No, it, <laughs> you can't yeah. understand it, but. Oh, that's really odd. Okay. Well, stop me if it's too distracting. Um, the next priority is the need for staff development. Next priority is staff development and increased funding for temporary staff. Is that or this a secondary priority? I like the next. 
Yeah. Next. Yeah, I like next better too. Okay. Keep it simple. Okay. All right, something else. Do you want another reread or do we feel ready for a vote? Thumbs up on a vote, is that? Please give it a thumbs up. Anybody else ready? Okay. All right, all in favor of uh, sending this letter to the Longmont City Council, please say aye. Bye. That passes unanimously Yay. amongst board members. Yes. All right. I will. Yes. Cynthia will be able to see this and pass it on to City Council in the near future. I know she's traveling right now, but she said she would get to it soon. So thank you, everybody. All right. Any closing thoughts there? Or? All right. Looks like we are on to then the budget update. Back to you, John. Uh, yeah, so un unfortunately with, with this, um, you know, the, the library's 2024 budget requests that we make every year, you know, around spring, were all folded into this election. So all the eggs of the library requests were put into the election. So, which, which leaves us with, well, what does that mean for our budget? Currently, what that means after I met with the city manager is our budget will go unchanged. There are other priorities. It sounds like there's uh, some competing police priorities that are not going to put any of my budget priorities at all through for 2024. So the budget we have now is the budget we have for 2024, at least as of right now. And I don't, I wasn't given any indication that that is going to change. So just wanted to update the board with that information so that you are aware. I've of course updated staff with that information as well, um, just so everyone's aware that, of what expectations they can have going into this next year. That's really the only, that's, that's the update. <laughs> that's, that's Less the update. depressing. Yeah. It, it, it's kind of, uh, you know, the, the knife that was in there is now twisted a little bit, right? So, yeah, it's, I, I, I was, I was hopeful at least that if this didn't pass, that something, some of anything of these budget requests would go through, even nominal stuff, but mm -hmm. there's zero is what I understand right now. Was that decision announced before or after the election? After. Mm -hmm. yeah. So before, like when the election, you know, I, I indicated my concern to the city manager that if if all the library's budget requests are being folded into the election, what does that mean if it fails? And uh, yeah. I said, you know, there, there's, there was uncertainty at that time, and I just indicated that I would be one of the first at his door to see what could be done. <laughs> and so what I was told just last week was nothing. I don't think I understand. But how is that possible if, oh, sorry, someone else talking? That's okay, go ahead. Oh, how is that possible if the city council hasn't met to discuss anything yet? Like, how does he get to just well, decide that? Well, he's it. telling me, you're correct, it's not officially decided, right? So, but what I'm telling you as far as, you know, me and, and having the city manager is, is someone that's in the line of someone I report to is telling me the current situation of the budget and so, so maybe the, the way I should have stated this better is that there's, it doesn't look good for any of my budget requests to go through, but you're correct in, in technically that has not been decided. So basically city council, he just anticipates that nobody on city council is gonna vote in favor of the library over something related to the police. Well, the city council's gone through budget yeah. discussions already before the election and the library wasn't part of it. So the question is, after the election, what does that mean? And, and, and so in my, what I understand, that that becomes more between myself and the city manager and what they have. And 
you know, there, there were a lot of unknowns primarily because of Proposition HH and what that means for the city in um, taking in property taxes and all that level. And that's still uncertain now because the governor pulled back the state yeah. legislatures to, you know, further discuss this. So it, it, it's really still unknown in a sense, but what was communicated to me was don't expect any change to your budget. So that's what I'm sharing. Thank you. I'm, I don't mean to shoot the messenger. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not. I'm not taking it that way at all. Okay. Well, I guess Susie, I just, mm -hmm. I know you're hearing us. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. That was the first I heard of that. So. <laughs> well, yeah. It's, I mean, it's new, right? It's new. I, yeah. I, I, it was just it, yeah. last week, and that was that was how it was communicated to me. So I just felt it was my responsibility yeah. to share that because I don't. I, I need to make sure staff and the board and anyone else that is aware that the outlook for the next year's budget doesn't look like there's any change. Mm -hmm. That is until they read our letter. Maybe we'll have some import. Is there a meeting we can come to, Cinezi, to talk and put a little pressure on this at all? Or? So I think our next meeting is the swearing in. I don't know if there's going to be a lot of substance in that meeting, because I think we do a signing of the boards. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I haven't even gotten the, the agenda yet. Um, I don't want to say don't, you know, I maybe come to public invited to be heard. The next opportunity we have so it's the fifth is that what is next next tuesday the 28th no so our swearing in isn't until the fifth so yeah the 28th that could be an opportunity for public invited to be heard i don't know when we are going to be discussing the outcomes but mm -hmm. i don't think you know you all should have to wait mm -hmm. for that. Um, John, I, I don't know where I'm getting this delusion that a while ago, John, you submitted your proposed budget for 2024. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought I walked away from that meeting thinking it was like, oh, if we don't if we don't make any headway during the election, at least we might get a little bit more than what we had. Like I thought, not that it was a guarantee, but I thought that there was more uh, of a positive outlook or optimis optimistic outlook around getting like a little bit more so that you could check off a couple more things on your, your list. I had the same feeling. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm not sure where that originated from, but the, the optics to me, if council or the, if the budget has no increase for 2024 uh, in a time of, you know, where, where, I don't know where we are, but, you know, inflation, I think, looms large in a lot of people's minds. To, to keep the budget for the library at 2023 levels following this election feels punitive. I feel that there is a statement, a value statement being made in that decision, if that is indeed a decision. I appreciate that. It's very well said. That I agree. So if you have empathy for the library's position right now, post-election, Give them something. Cola. Yes. Yeah. Susie, is this Susie, is this happening with Rec too? Do you, are we to assume that Rec's budget is frozen to twenty twenty three levels too? Um, I have not because I'm not part of the, the Rec advisory board and I haven't had a chance to chat with Jeff Friesner to see what, um, I'm assuming then that they've probably all heard the same thing. Wow. wow. But I don't, I don't know. If they did it, that's, that's what a I problem. Know. I, 
Yeah, I that's mean, what I want to find out. But if it's frozen too, I mean, talk about putting all your eggs in one basket well, during, you know, a time of inflation fears. I mean, just to put everything on the plan for winning the election seems Uh, I don't know, it just, it doesn't make sense to me because I know that there was a concern if HH passed, we would be receiving less revenue. Well, it didn't pass, and I know that there's a special session going on um, that might have some impact, but I don't think it would have the same impact if it had HH passed as far as revenue to the city. Uh, I could be mistaken. Um, and then the other thing that, um, yeah, that has me a little confused is how we're going. I, I, I need to meet with Harold. Um, because I know we had an increase to our budget, to our, you know, the 444 million, um, which is an increase from last year. So, there's a lot of moving questions I have I need to process this. I would be very curious to find out if everybody's budget is frozen to Jamie's point about the punitive nature of that. If it's only happening to the library, that would be especially painful. Mm -hmm. I would hope that's not the case, but I'm very curious. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts on this one? Uh, Susie, how will you be able to find that out and get back to us, do you think? So um, I'm going to reach out to Harold and just, I mean, I have to chat with him about some other stuff too. but. Um, set a time to meet with him. I don't know if, I don't know, how would that work? As far as, would this be something that I would bring up then next month when we meet as a group? Or? Can you get back to like Cynthia or yeah. John as an individual message and then they can individually yeah. tell us what you find out? I think that's allowed, right? So, yeah, okay. Thank you, we'd appreciate that. Anyone else? Okay, well, John, back to you. Uh, action plan updates. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, uh, all right, let me, let me go to share because I have that for the next couple of minutes. Um, if there's anything else we need to say before we get there, let me know. I'm, no? seeing my action plans I don't even really I mean I have it up but it's really for the next thing well I'll just talk through this while you kind of stare at that so uh, just a few things this month that went towards our action plan so the securing of the staff areas um, we finally got a quote back for the double doors that go into the staff area which I approved so now they'll begin work on ordering that and um, well, basically moving forward. The second piece of that is um, the electrical components and the wiring. Part of it I have a quote for, for some of the, phys the physical mm -hmm. materials and then the way I'm going to quote for or wiring. So, it, you know, this is taking time, but once I get those together, I can appropriate the funds for it and it'll probably be done early next year is what I'm guessing. So, you know, it's every steps further along than where we were is how I look at that one. Um, it's, it's years overdue. So um, under leadership here, um, I did uh, arrange uh, with, with some help from the city's HR department um, and Mines and Associates, who the city works with for uh, employee assistance program and other aspects, but they also have trainings. And so we brought in a couple of consultants did two different trainings on emotional intelligence, which I felt would be helpful for some of my leadership team here. And they, we talked about it a little bit after we had a 
a lot of time we can think about that, but it, a step towards some leadership development that I wanted to do was that. So there's more to come, but that's going to spill into next year, I can guarantee you. Um, um, under, sorry, now I'm trying to make sense of the note I wrote. Yeah, under customer experience, continuing EDI training. So um, I believe I probably mentioned this last month, but we did a, a, an equity meeting with myself and my leadership team and the, so the equity team and the city manager and my leadership team to kind of set the stage for on some upcoming workshops with individual departments within the library. So that began this past month. Um, at least the initial meeting with the circulation department. There'll be a few for each department. Um, the initial feedback was good. I'm not a part of these meetings by design, you know, to allow equity and the departments to have some good discussions around equity. Um, but we we have some work to do here. We've we've had a, a couple of incidents of recent, unfortunately, with some um, patron microaggressions towards some of my staff. And that's unfortunate, but how we as staff respond to that is something we can control. So, that, you know, that's what we're, one of the aspects we're working towards is how we approach that and support one another, but also making sure we, we do respond to that in a timely manner to, to people that might say or do things in that sense and how we respond to that in a way that makes sense which could range from a conversation to a suspension. Um, anyway, so, and then the last thing I have on here is, um, and it falls, I think, under customer experience as well, but this is um, our continued conversations and work with uh, the um, St. Brain Valley School District on library, student IDs acting as library cards for digital access. So I think I mentioned last time, I'd circled back with the school district and the contacts I needed to make on how that project began and the goals surrounding it, which were way more involved than it needed to be to provide access for our databases and resources that the district doesn't have. And so they're all behind it. They've had some questions about that and providing access. Anyway, the shorter story of that is through some emails, we have a meeting scheduled with the right people in December which right, meaning in the district because um, and, and for me to kind of share more of this story what the library's goals are how we meet student needs um, and with the goals that I have for it which is much less involved we don't need to capture student data other than a number which doesn't identify the student so it removes a lot of student um, privacy and what, what schools need to be concerned about for sure um, we don't have to worry about that, but and we're not trying to give them a full-fledged library card. We're trying to provide them access to digital collections, primarily in databases. They already have ebooks anyway. Um, it's more of these databases, and a lot of which they don't have, and they would love to have access to. So really, just to make that easier. So we've made a little bit of progress um, with that as far as getting things, some things scheduled, and I've learned that. It's getting a meeting scheduled with the mm -hmm. school district people is an act of God. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. <laughs> but, but the person I'm working with is, is yeah. very, I, I think they're they're behind me with it on it, so that helps. So mm -hmm. they're communicating with the right people. Yeah. So those are the action plan updates. And any questions or comments on that, otherwise I can. Well, I'll let you move the agenda. Sorry, are there any comments and questions on? Your volume went way down. Way down, yeah. Can you hear me now? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, Oh, sorry. It went from zero to 180. <laughs> All right, that must have been I was just saying thank you for working so hard on behalf of the students. Oh, I yeah, absolutely. I just think it's it's what we uh, what's what one of the many things we're here for. Beautiful. So. 
Yeah, and it's so important, I mean, again, to be on my soapbox, but like learning to be consumers of online content in a educated way is seriously important to our democracy. So helping kids have access to reliable information and teaching them how that looks different than a lot of the other things they can find on the internet is super, super important, not just for their own education, but I think for our whole society. So. No. No, that's the thing. It's in fact that was a question. I don't know if you heard Jamie's question. If it increased our costs as a library, it does not, and here's why. Because um, the, the contracts and the agreements we have with our various databases, it's by library card holder. So effectively giving the student into getting them into the system with their ID is effectively giving them a library card. Yeah. So we're not we're not functioning outside of our service area. The school district's in our service area anyway. Um, so no, it doesn't it doesn't change that. Okay. If that makes sense. Yes, I was just curious. Yeah, it's a great question though. That being said, it would be great to be able to increase, especially if we can get this to work, then I would love to expand our, you know, we have some resources I know they would love. We have a pretty much the full EBSCO package, which is really good for students. We have some Gale products, but you know, we can really expand on this. And I think getting the, the students in there and using it, and that would mean increased usage, which really helps. I mean, usage is a lot, right? That's how we justify paying for these things. So if that usage goes up, we can make a better case, at least if, if we have the budget for it, to, to spend money on that. So kind of in that same pot, um, and I don't know, you can tell me if you plan to speak to this in your director's report, um, which comes next. Uh, but I know this this action plan, what you're presenting to us tonight is really relative to your task box. Yes. Mm -hmm. So um, I would be curious either now or at another time to know what specific things in your action plan might not be achieved if you have no increase in your budget for 2024. That's a good question. I'll, I'll spend more time on it for maybe for the next meeting, especially as we approach it the year. Thank you. Anyone else? Good. Okay. Um, do you want to keep sharing, John, or do you want to take that? Yeah, no, I'll keep sharing for the next, if we're into director's okay. report, yes. Yeah, why don't you just go ahead and flow into that. Can you see my screen still? Of a PowerPoint. Yeah. All right. So my director's report is is our uh, what I try to do every month, which is you know highlights of, of programming that we're doing. Um, so I'll just I'll go through this. Um, so I can probably see it. Kind of just get a sense. So we had a really good event on. Um, during Van Books Week. And this was actually, you're gonna see this a similar slide again with adult. I love this for a couple of reasons. One is the topic, but one is this was a collaborative program between children and adult um, to bring in this topic of, of censorship. And um, I was not able to go, but it sounded like it was a great conversation and really good information shared and very well received. And, uh, and, and I'll add that, you know, at least for the public library in Longmont, you know, I don't get a whole lot of um, comments or anything about materials we should not have here. I feel like the school districts in general face more of that um, than, than we do. So knock on wood, that continues. But we still have to always, of course, be aware of that. So I think it was a great conversation. Um, the Eclipse program was huge. We ran out of those glasses within two seconds. 
that we got from a grant um, that the children wrote, the children's team wrote. Um, so those were distributed between them and, and all the service points. Actually, the, it was kind of what the children's team wrote the grant, not the close classes. Anyway, they were brought out. Our outreach person brought them out to some programs that were on that same day. So it was it was really really good stuff. Um, and this, let's see, I don't even know much about that program. To be honest, but let me keep going. Um, October, of course, we were busy with holiday mostly. Um, uh, but a lot done there with, with what we call passive programming, which is, you know, there's no library staff involved, it's just preparation and then whatever the passive program is, is really independent for the kids or families. Uh, La Tierra, of course, this was huge here. Um, Halloween was fantastic because the kids started here and then they, they did a little like parade over to the Civic Center and trick or treated mm -hmm. over there. So I got to see them all walking by. So you, you can see the amount of people here, almost 250 wow. people that were coming through here. Um, in, very few costumes. Um, and that's last month because I forgot to update it. Oops. So going along. <laughs> it's okay, it's just it's just the numbers part, which is important, but it's more about the stories, right? So here's the, the adult perspective of that uh, Van Books um, event. Um, the Domestic Violet Awareness Month was was really impactful. Uh, you know, you, I think the attendance, you know, that's a tough topic, but I think it was good. We partnered um, with the department within the city to do this. Uh, we had a display out for the entire month on this. Um, so that went over pretty well. And then some of our regular stuff uh, that adult does that are ongoing and People come to a lot. I've talked about those many times. And here's more stats from last month. <laughs> so, and then outreach. Um, here we go with outreach. So, unity the community right here was huge. That was a great turnout. Um, so, we were all there, uh, stationed right in front of our main doors, which was great um, for that event. And then I'll kind of just go through some of these uh, quickly because, you know, getting back to the point of how much our, our solo outreach person does without a yeah, team. Yeah, yeah. And, and, I, and I, I will say that, uh, and, and Lillian is good about indicating whether she did something literally herself or not, but many of these programs and like going back to community, you know, th this is a team effort, but that what that means, if I haven't said this before, is, um, library staff, I, I'm going to quote this, but they volunteer their time to do these things. They technically can't volunteer their time. But what it means is they, you know, if, if they want to help at an outreach event, they have to trade off work time to go to that event, which impacts staffing here. Mm -hmm. So just the amount of effort to do these things um, is huge. And, and Lillian does many of them alone, and doing a program alone where you're encountering 90 some people is a lot for one person. Mm -hmm. um, and then just going through, these are a lot of her regular programs. So that one's a regular one at the park. Our center she goes to um, every month. Um, but these, the numbers you're seeing, like 76 people, these just keep going up with the people that are engaging with her, which means mm -hmm. they're course engaging with the library. Um, parents involved in education yeah. is, um, I mean, Lillian just made that into a babysitting program into an actual event outreach mm -hmm. program, which is educational and they have activities and story time, um, and just it, it's just fantastic. Um, back at one of her parks, this was you can see the picture here that was on the silver course. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, Dia de los Americos, that was a huge, fantastic program that the city did, but we, of course, had a booth there. Um, so a lot of interaction there. Um, kind 
the CT as a regular program, just all this stuff. You know, some of this repeats. She she lists it out by when she's there. Um, uh, I put this in here just because I wanted to share, among everything else that Lillian does, she's a, a member of a, a library organization called Reforma, which is for um, Spanish speaking library staff and, and you know reaching out to that community. She's in Reforma and she presented and she taught a whole course on how to do outreach. So on top of everything else, and by the way, she also is a part of, um, she was asked to be a part of another organization in, within the state library um, called CLEL, which is Children Library something. Anyway, they select books that win awards, and, and she was specifically asked to be on that and to help um, with that. So she's doing all these things on top of her regular job. Um, and, and frankly, I, I worry them little bit sometimes on how much she's doing for her yeah. That's why yeah. I have that framework time. Yes. Yeah. Um, anyway, the senior center, that keeps growing. I mean, I think when I was here, started a year ago, she would get a few people engaging with her at the senior center, and now you can see over 50 people every time she's there. Um, and when she's there, she's handing out library cards, and these are some numbers that aren't in here. You know, so we're getting new users every time. Trunk or treat while Halloween stuff. Yeah, there were a couple of programs there. Lillian did one, and our children's staff did it at a different school, so we divide and conquer there uh, to deliver two programs at Halloween. Um, and then here, Halloween Library, of course, Lillian was involved in that too, even though it was a, uh, an outreach program. And then just getting into some of her numbers um, that, that she shares. And I, I just to point out, you know, from this time last year, you know, she's she's doubling the interaction she's getting. Mm -hmm. um, and then here's everything that you saw above just listed out. So that is outreach listed out. And I'm sorry this wasn't in the packet, but you know, I, I, I try to do that so you can have a chance to look it over and I incorporate it that into next month so that you have. That's my director's report. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, just on a personal interest note, I really appreciate the Band Books events. I always do every, something every year with my students on that, and then um, I got some pushback this year, which I thought was interesting for the first time, but it, it was a good conversation. Um, not from my school, I'm a parent, uh, but I'm actually in my law school program, you can do this like independent study thing and I'm gonna do it on banned books. Oh. And I'm considering focusing specifically on banned book requests in the public library system. So John, I might wanna reach out to you to get an insider perspective if you don't mind. No, not at all. I have okay. a question. Yeah, hopefully I could maybe bring some of my research to the group if it's, if it's of interest. I have a question from, uh, for you. So if an individual is concerned about a book, what is the process that the city or the library does as far as, okay, I want this book off the shelf? Right, right. What? So, so uh, generally what will happen and what, what staff are educated to do. So someone says something, and this has come up, the most yeah. recent was a few back in the summer, and it was something that was on display. Mm -hmm. but it's, and, in that case, they didn't want it. Up. They weren't asking it to be removed, but they didn't think it, should, it was appropriate to be displayed in a way that everyone could see it. But anyway, just it's still the same process. Mm -hmm. What I what I encourage staff to do is just really to, to listen, mm -hmm. let them express what they want, and if they have questions, they get a supervisor or a work mm -hmm. meeting, mm -hmm. and we talk. And then you know, if they really are adamant that that needs to be taken out. Mm -hmm. There's a formal process. Mm -hmm. In, in library land, we, it's a form, and everyone in the library almost calls it the same thing. It's called a request for reconsideration. Okay. And it's a, it's a written form. Mm -hmm. It has to be done in writing. Mm -hmm. And so that can be handed to a person that wants to challenge something. 
we would call it a challenge. Yeah. And they fill that out um, and give as much information as they want and the reasoning of why it doesn't mm -hmm. belong in the library. And then mm -hmm. that her policy gets turned into the library mm -hmm. and a committee reviews it. Okay. And the committee would always be me mm -hmm. and designated staff. Okay. And that would depend on what they're challenging. So if it's a yeah. children's book, I'm gonna bring in children's, children's staff. staff. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's what happens. And then based off that and research we do, then I write a formal response back. Okay. That's what okay. happens with okay. my decision for okay. our decision. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well thanks. That was helpful. I yeah. didn't know how how that was handled. And that's pretty common uh -huh. in libraries. You know, okay. Yeah. As far as how that's done. Any other comments on the uh, board's report? Questions? Not in this room, it doesn't look like But you muted yourself, Kathy. Did we have a friends meeting, Jamie? So I was not in town for the friends meeting this month because it was just uh, last week and um, did not receive minutes from that yet. Um, but what happened, uh, I told this board from our last meeting, uh, just so appreciative of all of the efforts that came from that corner um, around the election. And, and the friends did support a small campaign um, that included uh, social media posts, um, some lawn signs, some bookmarks um, that specifically try to highlight that uh, quote unquote reasonable increase um, that would have happened um, with the taxes. Um, and then lots and lots of talking to people in various communities and I felt like the friends were really well positioned to speak to senior residents um, and a lot of other uh, many of our, our friends volunteers are also involved with other organizations and nonprofits in the volunteer capacity and so to be able to go and visit other groups um, in the community and talk about the library you know I thought that was invaluable, but every time I spoke with somebody, they would let me know, like, here's how it's going, just so you know, this is the word on the street, nobody wants to pay more uh, for, for their tax bill this year. So, um, you know, I think that we, you know, the friends did what they could with the resources and the timeline that they were given, and, um, and for that, I'm, I'm really appreciative. Um, they are now going to segue into full book sale prep mode. So the holiday or pre-holiday sale starts December 13th. It goes through the 16th. Um, and so it's going to be a lot of promotion and getting ready for that. Great, thank you. Do you know, is there a December meeting or will they be taking a break? Um, I think they they originally weren't going to have a meeting and then decided that they had some things they might want to talk about. So uh, they well, are they meeting don't they do like, like a combined one, don't they, or something? Sorry, let me just With say. whom? A combined meeting with? I thought they did like a combined November-December meeting. Oh, that? I wouldn't know. This is my yeah. first December. I know, that's what I wish December. I had a better memory. For some reason, that just popped up for me, but, well. So in the last meeting, we voted, or they voted, to um, to not have a meeting in November or December, and then there was a change to that, so now. Right. There was a meeting in both November and December. <laughs> they um, made up for it. <laughs> yes. Okay. Are you able to attend the next one or should we get a surrogate or? I should be able to attend next time, but it is two days after our meeting. So you will not hear about the December meeting until January. 
Got it. Okay. Well, remember, we can always back you up if it's too much because you're doing extra. So, thank you. All right. Um, let's see. Susie, I think it's you, right? Yeah. So I'm just going to give some dates. Um, uh, on December, so we do have a regular um, session or regular meeting on the 28th. So if anybody wants to come to public invited to be heard, um, I think that would be a great opportunity. Um, we have the for our out. We have an outgoing reception for Council Member Waters. Uh, his that will be you know his official last <laughs> last day. Um, he'll be, and then we have our organizational meeting uh, at seven o'clock, where we swear in the new um, new council. And so I don't think a lot is going to really be happening at that. It's more cer ceremonial, okay. Um, and yeah, I'm trying to think. Oh, and then I just looked. We have the Lamont Housing Authority Board of Commissioners special meeting on November thirtieth. My anniversary. <laughs> to let my husband know. <laughs> How romantic. I know. I, know. <laughs> I mean, I can't think of a better way. A better way. Well, weekdays, <laughs> weeknights are hard. We'll celebrate on the weekend. <laughs> um, so I think, you know, I, I kind of said a little bit uh, earlier that we are going to be addressing the outcomes and, and reflecting on um, the um, ballot measures. This, um, you know, I don't know when, which meeting, but it'll be coming up. Um, I'm basically going to say a lot of what I said tonight, you know, just really looking at, at having in the future maybe ballot measures not occurring the same year that um, we have um, city council races. Um, you know, because I, I think that did play an impact. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to think of. I mean, there isn't there isn't a whole lot as we're trying to get ready for a new council and you know seeing council member waters off. So, yeah. so if any if you're available or want to come to any of those dates, you are. Yep. I'm sure we'd love to to see you all on December fifth, six o'clock. December 5th, uh, I thought it was the 28th, sorry. Uh, we have a regular session meeting with our old council on the 28th, but we have an outgoing reception for council That's member Waters. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, December 5th. And, and that starts at six. Okay. Yes, alas, the 28th is my birthday. Mm. So I can't make it to that one. Mm -hmm. um, if anyone else feels so inspired, you could always just go read our letter mm -hmm. if anyone is interested. Um, I'll let Cynthia know too. All right, any other questions for Susie? All right, I think the last thing on the agenda then is library profession news. Does anyone have anything to share? Well, I will share one thing that's kind of re somewhat related to book banning and just to bring this to people's attention if you haven't seen it, but there's a story that came out of Huntington Beach Library in Orange County, California. If you're not familiar with that area, it's fairly <laughs> politically conservative. That's saying it lightly. Um, but they um, passed a, their library board of trustees um, passed something that Basically, they're, they're recataloging a bunch of their materials and coming up with these um, library cards that restrict access to obscene or pornographic materials as decided by the board, basically. And I just want to bring this to attention because this is one of those other areas where people are trying to influence particularly public libraries and you know try to create ways where at least you know the, the argument on that side is you know it's that way parents can feel safe that their kids aren't checking out something that they shouldn't have but putting it 
um, in the form of a restrictive library card, um, it puts the, now this is John's opinion, uh, just to be clear, you know, do, do, going this method and doing it this way puts the burden on the library to enforce it, right? So if, it, if a 12 year old or a 13 or whatever comes to the desk and they hand them their card and it's the type of card that the parent decided wants restricted to certain things, then the library is required to not check that out. And this is, I, I, I will say very transparently, that is not the role of a public library. We are not responsible for your children. Parent and guardians are responsible. So I just, I wanna bring this forward just because this, this is the kind of stuff that is also going on. And, you know, anyway, it's Huntington mm -hmm. Beach, you can look it up. The article from their local newspaper called the Huntington Beach Tribune. And the article is called Library Sex Content Policy Okay. Wow. So it's very vague. I am, yeah. I will be shocked if that survives a constitutional challenge. Like, yes. that's the last thing that needs to happen. First of yeah. all, but like, based on my very cursory knowledge of these things, like, seems to violate lots of First Amendment rights of lots of different people, actually. Yeah, I mean, it's, there, there's, you know, there's layers. It's not a legal opinion, it's just, just my general yeah. opinion. Yeah, well, there's lots of, there's layers of issues with, mm -hmm. with this decision, and that that can't be the solution in my Well, it also puts the burden on, um, I mean, I don't, I don't guard my library card, so if it, if, if, so Marnie can't find her library card. Here, take mine. Like I, and so then like, are you, is the staff supposed to ID and make sure that it's the kid's card and not their parents or their name? I mean, it's just so, ooh, that's a lot of burden on like, whose library card do you have today? It's layers, right? And then with self-check, you mean, it's, oh, it's yeah. also, right. you know, assuming they might have self-check or not, but we do. So what are, are we supposed to now police self-check and take that away? But it's like, well, no, so yeah. You know, give your kid your, your library card, then and let them check out whatever they want because it's going to bypass staff anyway. So in some ways, the whole thing is ridiculous, but it's also concerning, very concerning. Yeah. Does the library, uh, that library have scanners at every entrance and exit to the library? I have no clue. Do we? No. What okay. do you mean scanners? Sorry. That if you have not checked out a library card, oh, like an alarm system. Yeah. yeah. No, we don't. Now they may. Yeah. They better. You know, um, yeah. We yeah we don't. That that's the kind of alarm system some libraries still have and, and a lot don't because for for the purpose of library materials loss, mm -hmm. take take this aspect away. It's it's been shown over time that those are really not effective and it just makes okay. people feel bad. I'm not uh, suggesting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm not recommending. No, I know. I know why you're asking. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I just, you know, yeah. I used to be a teenager and I've worked with teenagers and they will find a way mm -hmm. if they want to read something. Well, that's the mm -hmm. that's yeah. the whole thing about it, right? You know, so it's like I mean, even it's just also, even just so banning it, books. It's like if you're going to tell the world that this is now banned, you can see that the checkouts go up, the purchases of that book go up. Mm -hmm. Some authors make a lot of money as soon as their book is down. Mm -hmm. So it's just ridiculous that this is. Well, the book almost book. always available online. Yeah. Like, the, yeah. Yeah. You're not solving anything no. um, <laughs> except for, well, no, not anything except. You're not solving anything. Mm -hmm. You're yeah. just creating a lot of a world of problems. For the library and mm -hmm. which then can lead to the library and staff getting in trouble and if you're in arkansas you can actually be criminally charged yeah, the liability so anyway just yeah. that's library news um maybe next month i'll share something positive, positive? yeah <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if we can find something well tell me if this is positive yeah. yes is okay it looks like decano is it decano yeah voted not to become part of high plains library district is this does this have any bearing on anything i was just curious about that oh uh, what well, that's interesting i got, i wasn't sure it was a very saw, close it was very close yeah. Yeah. yeah i think um i don't know a lot about it i will say that um you know 
the opportunity to become a part of uh, a district of High Plains that is extremely well funded. Um, that sounds like a win win to me. Now, I don't know enough about the Kono independently. You know, I think, I, I just, I think that would probably would have been a good move to be absorbed into that district and get the benefits of being a part of that district and not having to figure so many things out yourself in a small town that probably has, you know, on scale, different but similar challenges that we face here in Lafayette. Yeah, I did ask Cynthia about it and she said that she had some thoughts on it, but I'll let her speak for herself, so maybe we can follow up with her next time, too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I know it was like, this is what the Denver Post reported, <laughs> at least, um, on November 8th, so yeah. updated November 9th, so I think it's where it landed. I know it was like too close to call for a while, so it'll be interesting to see. All right, anything else from, from the good of the group? All right, thank you everyone. Our next meeting is December 18th. Does anyone foresee um, enough conflict with that that we should move it? It's, I guess, a whole week before the schools get out. Is that right for you, uh, Susie, too? You have? Um, yeah, I, I mean, it doesn't matter. I'm not going anywhere, so I'll okay. be here. Everybody else, will we have enough people around? Okay. Sounds like it. Good. All right. Well, then um, the meeting will then be adjourned at 8.57 p.m. Thanks, everyone.